Leo begins, the youngest child asks that question, but it's good for us to ask that question for holy days of obligation. Why are we in church today? Is it that the church doesn't ever want us to have a day off where we can sleep in, so every time we're off from work, they put in a holy day of obligation? The exact opposite, actually. A lot of these days were put into place in the Middle Ages. Some are older than that, but in the Middle Ages, if there was a holy feast day for the church, all the landlords had to give the peasants the day off from working in the fields. So the church would give the people a day off by declaring a holy day. But you can't just declare holy days. There has to be a reason to celebrate them. And so they would take doctrines that people were beginning to doubt or that a lot of question had been called upon, and they would dedicate the day to celebrating that doctrine, like the Immaculate Conception of Mary, the Assumption of Mary, Body and Soul into Heaven, uh, and today's feast, Mary, the Mother of God. For us, it just seems natural to call Mary the Mother of God. Yeah, she gave birth to Jesus. I mean, the angel came and said, you will conceive a son by the Holy Spirit, not by man, and in your womb you will bear a son. That she's the Mother of God. But there's a tremendous amount of dispute. There was in the ancient world, when this title was given to Mary, around the 4th, middle of the 5th century, and especially in our time with the great divisions in the Christian world and many Protestant um, denominations who think that we give too much attention to Mary. You shouldn't call her the mother of God because a parent is greater than the son, and if Mary's the mother of God, you're saying she's greater than God. I don't see it that way. I don't think you do either. And I think we can back it up with Scripture. Holy Scripture can show us that it's very proper to call Mary the mother of God. And in fact, if we don't, if we say that Mary was the mother of the human Jesus, but not the mother of God, well, that's a heresy. Jesus is fully God, fully human, the two intertwined. You can't separate them apart. If Mary's the mother of one, she's the mother of both the natures of Jesus. That's why it's so important to get this right. And the scriptures allow us to do it. If you remember, in Luke chapter 2, chapter 1, chapter 2 is the story of Bethlehem. Chapter 1 is all the stuff that led up to it. Mary is told she's visited by the angel, told she will conceive. She's told her cousin Elizabeth is also pregnant, well beyond her years, and had no children, but now she's been given the special joy of a child so that you could know that this is true and God is powerful and can do anything. And Mary runs. She jumps right in the car and zips up to Ein Kerem, where Elizabeth and Zechariah live, and she walks in there. And what does Elizabeth greet her with? Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And how is it that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Look it up. Luke chapter 1. It's, one of the, it's the second joyful mystery of the rosary, the visitation of Mary to Elizabeth. Biblical. That she is called the mother of the Lord. That's also where we get the Hail Mary from. I'm sure you recognize the words. Anytime someone says, you shouldn't be praying the Hail Mary. That's not a scriptural prayer. Oh no. <laughs> you read the first chapter of Luke. Hail, full of grace. Well, the angel says to Mary, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And then Elizabeth says to her, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. The whole Hail Mary in Luke chapter 1. And the mother of my Lord has come to me, Elizabeth says. Mary, the mother of God. And we believe because of this, she has a very special role to play. In heaven, standing next to the throne of Jesus, this is biblical too. In the Old Testament, the mother of the king uh, the, was the queen. The queen was not the wife of the king. In those days, kings had multiple wives. But the mother of the king, she was the true queen. And she could petition on behalf of the subjects. And the king would give in to her desires. Thus we have a great intercessor in heaven. Mary, the mother of God. Should we even be praying to saints in general for things? Where's that in the Bible? Check this out in Revelation chapter 5 you will see that these elders standing around the throne, people in these white robes, are offering bowls of burning incense, which are the prayers of the Holy Ones. That's what the book of Revelation says, that the saints in heaven, these are not angels, these are human beings in white garments, these are souls that have gone on to heaven, they are holding bowls full of our prayers, burning them like a fragrant offering to God who receives them. The saints interceding for us, very biblical, Mary is the queen of all saints because she is the mother of God.
Let us stand and proclaim our faith.